Welcome to the Lumension Intelligent Whitelisting Video Vignette Series, in which we discuss how specific features and capabilities of the Lumension Intelligent Whitelisting Solution help improve the security of your endpoints in your organization's network. Hello, my name is Chris Merritt, and in this episode I'm joined by Chris Chevalier from Product Management to discuss how you can automate whitelist management using Intelligent Whitelisting. Whitelisting is known to be effective but difficult to manage, especially in today's dynamic environment. In most organizations, the endpoint is constantly changing as applications are patched, updated, or upgraded. So, Chris, how does one maintain an effective whitelist, one that both provides better security but does not impact end users' productivity in this situation without labor-intensive manual process? Well, Chris, you're right that Maintaining a whitelist in an application control environment can require a lot of administrative time and effort to, to keep the whitelist up to date with the changes that are happening in the endpoints. So what we've done in Lumension application control is created a trust engine to help deal with that change. Now, in this example, we've got a Windows 7 endpoint, which has already been locked down, so whitelisting is being enforced on that endpoint. And if we switch over to that endpoint, I can show you that after this endpoint was locked down, the user went out and downloaded Firefox, and he wanted to uh, install Firefox on his machine. So he goes out to the internet, he downloads it, and he tries to install this and of course application control blocks this because this is change that happened without administrator intervention. Well, we can account for this change with our trust engine. So in addition to managed policy types, we've got several trust application control policies which will allow change to happen without administrator intervention. So for example here I've got a trusted updater policy for Lumension patch and remediation and what that allows me to do is to deploy software installations and patches out to my environment using the patch and remediation tool without having to update whitelists using the application control tool. The application control will be aware of the updater and automatically whitelist anything that gets deployed to it. So if I want to put Firefox on that endpoint, I can switch over to Lumension Patch and Remediation all within the same console here and, and workflow and I can look for the Firefox installer and I will select uh, the version of Firefox which I want that end user to have and I'll step through the the patch and remediation deployment wizard here to deploy this software I can select my endpoints I could be deploying additional software to that endpoint if I wanted to at this particular time everything that I deploy will be automatically whitelisted when it gets to that endpoint. So here it would list all the software packages, in this case just the one. And here I can choose my user end user notification if I want to inform the user that I'm going to deploy it. And then when I finish this job, Lumension Patch and Remediation is going to go deploy this Firefox installer out to that particular endpoint. Now remember that the installer that's on the endpoint won't run because it's not on the whitelist. However, when patch and remediation goes to install it, it will install on the whitelist and the application will be whitelisted on that on that particular endpoint. So a trusted updater is a process or a tool that we can use to add or change software on our endpoints and it need not just be Lumension patch and remediation you can use any type of software updater that you want to be allowed to add files to the whitelist for you, you know, without your intervention that's what the trusted updater policy type uh, does for us in addition to trusted updater we also have a policy type of uh, trusted publisher 
And what Trusted Publisher allows us to do is look at digital signing certificates of particular applications. And if we wanted to, we could authorize everything that was signed by a particular digital certificate. So if I wanted to, for example, allow a thin print to be executed on all of my virtual machines, then I wouldn't need to whitelist every, uh, every version of thin print necessarily. I could come out here, add the certificates for thin print, and then select my virtual machines, and I can add those, and then now that will be allowed to execute on all virtual machines just by virtue of its digital signature. We don't need the, the specific file to hash. Another example for a trusted publisher might be the WebEx updater. So when someone logs into a WebEx meeting and they download an update to Meeting Manager, the administrator didn't have that in advance. He couldn't add it to the whitelist. There was no knowledge that it was coming. We could simply authorize anything signed by WebEx to execute, and then that update would come down and be allowed to execute on that endpoint, again, without the intervention of the application control administrator. Another type of trust would be trusted path. So I have a trusted path policy here in which case I in which I can specify a particular path on an endpoint which in which everything is allowed to execute. So if there's if I'm trying to manage machines where there are developers who are outputting new executables all the time and they've got a let's say a build output directory then rather than try to keep up and hash everything uh, which which is output with the from the developers, I can either authorize it if it's signed with a trusted publisher policy. If it's not signed, I can assign a trusted path policy, and that software will be allowed to execute. So you can see how these trust policies combine to create a powerful combination of ways in which the whitelist and executions can be managed without any application control administrator intervention whatsoever. So you really use the uh, trust engine in intelligent whitelisting to automate trusted change on your endpoints. That's right. The trust policies allow change to happen and allow executions to happen uh, without administrator intervention. They don't. They're, they allow things to execute which don't necessarily have to be on the whitelist. Uh, they can be used to automatically update the whitelist or automatically allow things to execute without admin intervention. Great. Thanks, Chris. I hope you enjoyed this short video on how the Lumension Intelligent Whitelisting Solution will help you improve security, increase productivity, and reduce total cost of ownership. For more information, please visit the Intelligent Whitelisting page on our website, where you can get free premium security tools to assess your network today. Thank you.